since March started learning swordplay from Yan Cheng and Yun Li, her voice has been absent on the express. I wonder how well she's progressing. Where has she been these days? you are. I was looking around before you got here. I already looked everywhere, but March 7th is nowhere to be found. Nope. Let's just assume she successfully skipped class. Actually, she's been quite diligent in her swordplay practice and hasn't taken many breaks lately. I think she deserves a day off. Uh, besides... I used to skip classes even more than her back when I was still learning. If I was in the mood, I could train for three days straight. But if I wasn't in the mood, none of my seniors could find me. So, I can understand where she's coming from. Ah, don't make excuses for her. Since you're here, let me treat you to some tasty food. I'm more interested in you today. Let's walk and talk. Lingsha told me there's tasty food in Arum Alley. Let's go there. Dumpling and steam buns. The buns are huge. A table for two, please. All right, come on in. What would you like? Well... We'll have one of everything on the menu. The entire menu? Hmm. Do you think it'll be enough? Oh, don't worry. There are two of us. Well, then I'll start making a few dishes, and if you need more, just let me know. Thank you. Well, to be more precise, I'm interested in your sword. Yen Ching mentioned you before. He said that you're not to be underestimated, and that your weapon has a unique shape. So I've always been curious about your sword. How the weight is distributed, what material it's made of, whether it contains any special ingenia, and what kind of sword techniques you use. Uh, seriously? A bat? Yeah, now more than ever. So, it really is a baseball bat. Grandpa said that a sword doesn't have to be constrained by its shape. So, in a sense, your bat is a sword too. He also said that a weapon mimics its master. So, your bat actually reflects your habits and nature, you know? <laughs> Let me guess. You're someone who doesn't follow the rules, enjoys improvising, and can handle yourself well against tough foes. Am I right? <laughs> Amazing, right? And I bet you always say something silly like, rules are made to be broken. I've come across so many sword wielders who acted all righteous and moral, but were really just liars. Their swords always told the truth though. 
They told me that their wielders were just a bunch of frauds who relied on their divine weapons for everything. I've hunted down hundreds of swords like this so far, and every single one of them has been melted down. Swords are more honest than words. It's much easier to judge a sword than to judge someone's words. So I rarely make mistakes. But just looking at a sword is not enough. Grandpa always says, words and expressions can be deceiving, but in a fight to the death, a sword's movements never lie. The war dance is just around the corner. You'll be participating, right? Miss Yoon Lee, for talented sword masters like you, the war dance is a perfect opportunity to show off your skills and make a name for yourself. But for people like her who have already made significant contributions to the Sienjo, they maybe don't need to prove themselves on the war dance stage. It has been a while, Miss Nameless. And you are? Uh, I suppose busy people have short memories. Please let me introduce myself. I'm Shi Kui, one of the secretaries serving the Hellmaster Yu Kong. I apologize for interrupting your conversation. I happen to hear you discussing the war dance. And since this person is an old acquaintance, I thought I'd come and say hello. Yes, with the war dance approaching, many guests from afar are pouring in. Mr. Pavo here is one of them. He's from the distant planet Kalevala. Mr. Pavo's planet recently joined the Pan Cosmic Trade System. He brought his delegation here this time not only for business, but also to return something that belongs to the Xianzhou. Miss Shikwe, the word gift is perhaps more fitting than return. While it did once belong to the Xianzhou, we faced many tribulations to be able to deliver it here, so it should be considered a gift. I apologize for my poor choice of words. Mr. Pavo's delegation brought a legendary Sienjo sword that had been lost for centuries. General Huayan plans to personally thank them at the Palace of Astrum and present the sword as a prize to the champion of the war dance. Mr. Pavo and I were actually on our way there. Since you two were talking so enthusiastically about the war dance, maybe you'd be interested in joining us at the Palace of Astrum? Let's head to the Palace of Astrum together, hmm? I know, right? Thanks to March 7th skipping class, we get to join in on the fun. Grandpa always asks me to go look at swords with him, but he hasn't said anything about this one. It's really weird. But now that we're invited, let's go and check it out. There you are. Come on, let's go to the ceremony together. Please allow me to offer a sincere compliment to my fair lady. Your beauty is as pure as a snow-white iris. Well, if it isn't my dear friend, glad to meet you again. Uh, who is this weirdo? Uh, I mean, um, who is this knight? I am Argenti, a member of the Knights of Beauty. I was invited as a part of the Kalevala delegation to escort the legendary Mieka Kivesa back to the Sienjo. May I have the honor of knowing your name? Uh, my name is Yun Li. What a beautiful name. I wonder if you have ever heard the holy name of the pure and flawless goddess Adrilla. Oh, you're here, Yun Li. <laughs> Didn't expect you to be so well informed. Well, now that you're here, don't forget your manners. Manners, manners. Come on, you won't find another granddaughter as polite and well-behaved as me. <sighs> well, just remember this is a very serious ceremony. 
Sorry for keeping you waiting, Mr. Pavo. Now, let the sword gifting ceremony begin. Before the uh, ceremony officially commences, I want to express my gratitude to the Knight Argenti. Thank you for enlightening us about the sword's origin and for escorting it here safely so that we may complete this ceremony. On behalf of the Kaluvalan delegation, I, Pavu Kalastaya, am here to return the legendary Mieka Kifesa to the Sienjo Alliance, its rightful homeland. I'm truly grateful for Kalevala's noble act of returning the sword and for the Knight of Beauty's chivalry. Now, as we gather here on the Sienjo Lawfu, I officially welcome the sword back to its homeland. Mieka Kivesa. It's a fitting name for a sword with such a legendary past. I still remember the name engraved on this sword the day it was forged. Guyin. It was forged by Hang Guang, a craftsman from the Ju Ming's Pyro Jaya Forge. Wait, a uh, Hang Guang? Although its blade is worn and cracked, its essence remains as resilient as the Sienjo Cloud Knights. All it needs is some repairs and polishing by the skilled craftsmen of the Artisanship Commission to regain its former glory. I've decided to entrust this sword, Gu Yin, to the Lawfu Artisanship Commission for restoration. Furthermore, it will serve as the prize for the champion of the Lawfu War Dance. This sword will be wielded against abominations to protect our homeland and live up to the mission of the Kalevalan delegation that returned it from so far away. Thank you, General. It is an honor for Kalevala. Now, esteemed knight and delegation members, please head to the Artisanship Commission, where... No! This sword was forged by Hong Guang. Yun Li! These esteemed guests have brought back your father's last work. Where are your manners? Oh, uh, I didn't realize this sword was actually forged by your father. Returning it to its rightful owner is, uh... Grandpa, give me that cursed sword right now! I'll melt away the remnants of that man's curse once and for all! Don't be rude, Yun Li. Apologize to our esteemed guests from afar. I'm sorry. I'm sorry for making a scene. But I have to melt down this cursed sword. I won't let it fall into anyone else's hands. Yun Li, please. Go, for now. <sighs> this is exactly why I didn't want you and Lee to know about this. I didn't want to create trouble, but... Trouble found its way here anyway. Perhaps it really is divine intervention. Could you please keep an eye on Yun Li for me? That is a tall order, but I'm counting on you. I apologize for the unfortunate interruption. Let us move on with the ceremony. Unless I'm mistaken, you and me should be around here somewhere. <laughs> Did Grandpa send you to look for me? I bet he did. Really? Thank you. 
Just so you know, I'm here just waiting for the perfect moment to snatch that sword. And once I have it, I'll melt it down before anyone can react. Don't even think about stopping me. No one can stop me. Grandpa sent you here. <laughs> Surely he doesn't want you to help me. Have you heard of cursed swords? That sword is one. I guess that's what it means, literally. A cursed sword lets anyone, even a complete novice, wield it with insane skill. Just by holding the hilt, even the weakest rookie can brandish it with incredible speed and strength. I'm not joking around. And I'm not making up some crazy story. While a cursed sword grants instant abilities to its wielder, it comes at a cost. It's like continuously adding fuel to a forge. With each swing, the sword drains the wielder's blood and essence. Day by day, the fuel will run out, leaving nothing but an empty husk. <laughs> Soon enough, there will no longer be a person wielding a sword, but a mindless, killing machine, consumed by bloodlust and murderous thoughts. I wonder if you've ever heard of a creature called a Heliobus. It loves to feed on human emotions and memories, and excels at manipulating its hosts. There was a lunatic swordsmith who infused metal blades with Heliobi, as he was obsessed with turning weapons into living things. And this is how cursed swords were made. I know, I shouldn't have caused a scene at the sword gifting ceremony. But I thought this through. If I don't make a fuss now, that cursed sword will cause a whole lot more trouble. So it's better if it's me causing the trouble. By the way, aren't they supposed to be taking the sword to the Artisanship Commission for repairs? Why haven't they come out yet? Any ideas? <sighs> Looks like they're not going to show up here. I'll just head straight to the Artisanship Commission. It doesn't matter why Grandpa chose that sword. I won't let it fall into anyone else's hands. I'll track down every single sword he forged, and melt them down one after another. Just like I've been doing all these years. I have to go now. Commission is so Big. Where could she be? Just a while ago, a girl came up to me, all fierce and demanding directions. She said she's a member of the Artisanship Commission. Do you know her? No idea who she is. If she really works here, how can she not know her way around? Yeah, she wasn't big at all, but that weapon of hers was pretty intimidating. She was in a hurry, heading straight for the Artisanship Commission, and I didn't want to ask too many questions. She said something like, I'm a member of the Artisanship Commission. Where do you keep your precious stuff? I got scared and pointed her toward Master Gongshu's warehouse, where he stores his arumatons. Wait, why did you give her directions? What if she's planning to steal something? Where else? Like I said, she was headed straight for the warehouse, where all the valuable arumatons are. Yeah, that place is filled with Master Gongshu's precious arumatons. I bet they'll give her a hard time. What are you doing here? Look, if 
If I get into trouble, it's my problem. I don't want to drag you into it. Fine. Let's smash these metal cans first. Then we can talk. Decided to play your... <laughs> Relax. <laughs> what? Ill fate to set. Beneath the waters lies an endless abyss. I weep for the departed. It too shall fall. <sighs> that was the last of them. Thank you for helping me out. This place is heavily guarded. But there's nothing but arumatons. Where is the arsenal? <laughs> Seems like not even those craftsmen know where the arsenal is. At this rate, we won't find anything. And Grandpa might take me away before I can do anything. <laughs> You're not really here to help me. You're here to stop me, right? You have a kind soul, but if you want to stop me, you'll have to prove yourself. <laughs> you probably think I'm being impulsive and unreasonable, right? H hey, I'm not always like this. It's all because of that cursed sword. <laughs> Look. I owe you an explanation, but this isn't the best place to talk. We need to find somewhere else. Let me be clear though, I'm still pretty riled up. This... This is just a temporary break. I already told you about Guyan. The sword that was returned during the ceremony. It's a cursed sword with a heliobus inside. And Hong Guang, the swordsmith who forged it, is my father. I rarely mention his name to anyone other than Grandpa. Maybe, like you said, I've been avoiding having to talk about him. But as long as my mission to hunt down cursed swords continues, it's impossible to avoid the topic forever. For some reason, I feel like I can open up to you. Honestly, I don't remember much about him. All I know is that the Pyrogyre Forge used to be a bustling place, with people from all over coming to get one of his swords. They called him the greatest master craftsman since Yingxing. I didn't catch all the details, but I do remember seeing him forge those amazing swords while the visitors watched with smiles on their faces. I used to believe that craftsmen brought happiness to others. The swords crafted by the Pyrogyre Forge are famed across the stars. They possess exceptional sharpness and invincibility. <laughs> With these legendary weapons, even ordinary people can become skilled warriors, capable of overcoming the most formidable opponents. But then, he became obsessed with becoming a famed swordsmith and started crossing all sorts of lines. He forged cursed swords that should never exist. And all those people who desired those twisted swords started flooding into the palace. <sighs> However, just like Grandpa said, those who excel with the sword will eventually suffer by it. The palace was overrun with visitors from afar. Some left empty-handed, 
Others got swords that didn't fulfill their desires. And some even resorted to stealing. And in the midst of all the chaos my father created, he ended up being stabbed by one of the swords he forged. It was so sudden and unexpected. Everything went silent for a moment. All I could hear was the sound of bones breaking and blood pouring out. I was frozen in place, unable to move. It was only when my mother pushed me away from the deadly swing of the cursed sword that I managed to escape. I don't remember much after that, except for the pounding of my heart and the sound of my own gasps of breath. I could hear the smiths in the pyrogyre forge shouting, run away, Yunli, and the screams of agony my tears when it stopped, and I couldn't see anything. I kept gasping for air until I collapsed in a pool of blood. If General Huayan hadn't arrived in time, I probably wouldn't be here talking to you now. After that, General Huayan took me in and treated me like his own granddaughter. To me, he is a hundred times better than my sinful father. He taught me forging and swordsmanship. Hang Guang paid for his sins, but his troubled legacy must not go unchecked. According to the records, he forged a total of 1,382 Heliobus cursed swords, and 182 of them had unique designs. When I joined the Pyrogyre Forge for training, I made a vow to hunt down all those cursed swords. So far, I found 312 of them, and Guyan will be my 313th. Like all the other cursed swords, I'll separate it from the Heliobus. Then, I'll melt it down and make it part of the Blade of Forged Remnants. <sighs> I've said my piece now. Even though it'll be tough for Grandpa, I still have to melt down the sword. So... You're saying, even though Grandpa knew it was a cursed sword, he still chose it to be a prize because he thought it wouldn't cause any trouble? No. No matter how I think about it, something is definitely off. Grandpa didn't tell me anything about the ceremony. He must be hiding something. Besides, after our argument today, you want me to go back and talk to him now? <laughs> no way. At least not today. Maybe tomorrow. Hmm. Somehow, after talking to you, I feel like I've cooled off a bit. Well, I'll have an honest conversation with Grandpa tomorrow. And... And I won't take any action against Gu Yun... Until he gives me his reasons. <sighs> yeah... I shouldn't have done that in a public place. Anyway... Thank you. <sighs> we'll catch up tomorrow. My granddaughter didn't cause any trouble, did she, young lady? Sorry for all this trouble. You and Lee told you quite a bit. Now it's time for this old man to tell my side of the story. Uh, Han Guang was my beloved disciple. A rare genius not seen in the Pyrogyre Forge since Yingxing. However, talent can sometimes be a curse. 
He had an unusual fervor for forging, and he dreamed of forging a sword with self-awareness that surpassed that of humans. He believed it would make warriors invincible without any training. According to him, while weapons of mass destruction like Zhu Ming flames and alchemical arrows can destroy many enemies, true victory lies with soldiers who fearlessly fight, ready to lay their lives on the line. Usually, Xian Zhou swordsmiths infuse a basic level of awareness into their swords to make them easier to wield. But even then, soldiers need to experience countless battles to overcome fear and sharpen their instincts. So... <sighs> By infusing Helio Bai into swords, he managed to forge weapons that could grant their wielders strength and valor and even make decisions for them. However, weapons are different from regular tools. They are meant to kill, plain and simple. After countless battles, all the anger, fear, and bloodlust are soaked up by the Heliobi within the swords. The soldiers wielding them not only gain strength, but they also become consumed by the malice, turning them into puppets possessed by the swords. No matter how noble Hong Wan's intentions were, those weapons, soaked in blood, turned into cursed swords eventually. Later, Outworlders got wind of what he was doing and encouraged him to keep forging cursed swords. They came up with all sorts of reasons, from taking back their kingdoms to slaying demons. And you know what happened next. That massacre took her parents' lives, and the lives of many craftsmen in the Pyrogyre Forge. Yun Li managed to survive, but she couldn't escape the horrors of that day. I thought this sword could be an opportunity. I wanted to tell her that her father wasn't all evil, that even the man she resents so much managed to forge a true sword of heroes. I also wanted to find a chance to tell her about the history and origin of this sword, but not during the ceremony. As you saw, it wasn't a good time. I've instructed the Artisanship Commission to keep the sword safe in the arsenal. If you have any doubts, feel free to ask the people involved. Since my granddaughter mentioned talking to me tomorrow, I'll be waiting for her. By the way, you watched over her for quite some time. You must be exhausted, aren't you? <laughs> I'll be counting on you then. Time to go back and find that class skipping March 7th. Everyone is here. 
It's time for questioning. Yun Li, I'm sure you understand why the official called you here, right? Yeah, but I didn't steal the sword. Now is not the time to use your reputation like that. If we don't recover the sword, we will be breaking our promise to the Lawfu and betraying the delegation. We're counting on you to find the truth, Official Daha. Yes. It's my duty to thoroughly investigate the case. Even though Yun Li is firm in her words, we can't just rely on her testimony. <sighs> After everything, the sword still got stolen. They should have given it to me from the beginning. In this case of Gu Yun's theft, everyone involved seems suspicious to some extent. Miss Yun Li is the main suspect. First, during the sword gifting ceremony, Yun Li openly expressed her intention to steal the sword. She even mentioned it multiple times. After the ceremony, she broke into the Artisanship Commission and destroyed Arumatons in an attempt to get the sword. Am I right? <laughs> That's true. The Realm Keeping Commission inspected the arsenal where Gu Yun was stored, and there were no signs of forced entry through the doors or windows. The only possible entrance or exit was a small window gap, just a few inches wide. If March 7th were here, she'd probably jinx it and accidentally reveal who the thief was. The box containing Gu Yun was opened, and the sword went missing. But none of the other swords in the room were touched. Which means... Well, uh, I do know about the box and the cursed sword. Exactly. The suspect had a clear motive and took only Gu Yun. So, besides the ceremony participants, only the delegation members had access to the sword. So, did you steal it? <sighs> then stop choking around. I can prove that she came to me after leaving the Artisanship Commission, so she couldn't have stolen the sword. To put it simply, not everyone who's seen the sword has been to the Artisanship Commission, and not everyone who might want the sword has seen it. So, the only remaining suspect is Miss Yun Li. <laughs> Fair enough. So... I didn't steal the sword. Well, when you've eliminated the impossible, whatever remains, however improbable, must be the truth. If you want to prove me wrong, you'd better come up with some solid evidence. Let me gather my thoughts. I need to help Yun Li clear her name. If you've found any clues, feel free to tell everyone. All right. Come back to me when you're ready. Who could have thought that the Mieka Kivesa would be stolen? And that the prime suspect is General Huayan's granddaughter? Regardless, we've accomplished our mission, and now it's the Sienjo's problem. By the way, why did that girl call it a cursed sword? It's quite upsetting. That's enough, young lady. Let me get something straight. On Kaluvala, this sword has always been highly revered. The first master of the Mieka Kivesa slew countless demons and then passed it down to a line of wise monarchs. The monarchs would heed the guidance of the hero spirits within the sword and gain insight into defeating their enemies. What is, uh, Helio? <laughs> what? <laughs> ah, never mind. The point is that the Mieka Kivesa did help the ancestors of Kalavala build a strong foundation. It's definitely not a cursed sword.
I don't want to make things difficult for official Dahau. Let's do this his way, and prove my innocence. If I can find that cursed sword, I can prove my innocence right away. Well, don't blame me if I find it first. And melt it down. There's something else bothering me. Why would the thief take the sword and leave the case behind? Did they melt down the sword like I wanted to? I mean, carrying around the sword like that would be pretty conspicuous. Wouldn't a thief prefer to take the case as well? Yun Li says she didn't steal the sword, and I am willing to believe her. But I know well that Yun Li can be impulsive. So if she did steal the sword on a whim, I won't show her any favors. You were with Yun Li yesterday, young lady, so you have the best chance to prove her innocence. Is there anything you need to ask me? I'm counting on you, then. Yes, I received your message yesterday and went to the arsenal to check on it. But when I went back this morning, all that was left was the case. I don't know anything else, so asking more questions won't help, I'm afraid. However, as the master artisan of the Artisanship Commission, I've got to clarify something. Even though the sword was stolen, this commission is still highly secure. Wait, no. I just remembered. My precious Arumatons were smashed! <sighs> flower petal inside the case. So, the thief took the sword from the case without picking the lock? If you've found any clues, feel free to tell everyone. Thank you. But... I'm not sure if I can convince Mr. Dahau. A hundred percent sure. Fine. Let me go through my reasoning again, and you can interrupt if anything feels off. Throughout the entire incident, there was only one suspect who broke into the Artisanship Commission, and that was Miss Yun Li. Miss Yun Li caused a ruckus at the Artisanship Commission trying to take away Gu Yun, but you stopped her in her tracks. After bidding farewell to you, Yun Li pretended to leave, but snuck into the arsenal alone and stole Gu Yun. We haven't found any other suspects or evidence. I carefully examined the lock of the sword case, and there were no signs of tampering or damage. What does that mean? As to why the case was never locked in the first place, only the people who delivered it to the Artisanship Commission would know. Plus, I found something else inside the case. Which piece of evidence should I use to further convince Dahao? We haven't found any other suspects or evidence. I found this, in the crevice at the bottom of the case. <sighs> A... rose petal? 
Huh. I must have missed it during the search. But why was there a pedal inside the case? I don't know. But I do know that wherever that knight of beauty goes, he always leaves behind a trail of rose petals that's almost impossible to clean up. My thoughts are a mess. Let me sort them out. The sword case was never locked, which is evidence that only someone who delivered the sword could have done that. And the rose petal was probably left behind by that knight of beauty. But how did he manage to take the sword from the Artisanship Commission? Why did he steal it after returning it here? And why would he leave that petal in the case? I know. Guyum flew out of the case on its own. The Knight of Beauty only unlocked the box to aid its escape. Don't be ridiculous. How can a sword escape from a case on its own? Hmm. You've never seen a flying sword before? I, uh... I've only heard about the Mieka Kifesa being able to fly in Legends. But even if it could fly, why would the Knight of Beauty do this? Like I said, the sword contains a Heliobus. Argenti must have been under the control of the sword. Maybe he was under its control even before you arrived on the Lofu. Official Dahao. Where can we find that knight? Uh... Let me see... Uh, uh. The docking location of Argenti's ship. The one and only. Let's go. We've got to find Argenti before that sword completely takes over his mind. <laughs>